everyone, so let's try, uh, today I'm going to try to show you some cool 3D visualizations within 3D Slicer. If you Google 3D Slicer, you can download it, it's a pretty big package. I'm on a Mac, so I opened it with my terminal, you probably can, I think, double click it with Windows, and for Linux, you can run it from the command line. So, okay, let's bring in some data. So, all the data that I have currently is in um, nifty format, hence the NIIIs. Um, but if you've analyzed or, you know, DICOM format, you can easily bring them in. If you're bringing in DICOMs and you go to add data, bring in the header file. And if you're going into, through DICOMs, go to the add volume folder. And if you, or the add volume up here, the add volume button. Okay, so pretty much... Uh, I got some of the data. There's a, a label map, it's called. We'll get to that in a little bit. You don't have to click anything, don't send or anything. Just apply it, and I'll tell you what this data is in a second. So, 3D Slicer is a module-based um, software. So, it's just a bunch of different things that can do specific tasks. And one of these we're going to be referring to as models, which is 3D representations of our data. Okay, so right now, these five, um, let's look at one of them have part of an ROI, so a region of interest. Um, also, you see how these two did not update. If you want that to happen, you link them. So make a little link, so everything does the same thing. So in all three planes. So as you can see in the bottom left corner down here, that the background says this value of one. So this is a normal ROI mask where everything's a one that you wanna that you wanna kinda see or whatever, and everything's a zero otherwise. This um, is a combined mask where they're given different labels. So I'll refer to this as a label map, and you see in the bottom left, this is a three, this is a two, you know, this is a one. You can change the shading and stuff like that, but we don't really care about this. We actually want to color these things in, and this is a um, a template, either a template brain or a brain from one of our participants or something like that. All right, so let's get to building some models. Let's go to editor. So um, so this is going to allow us to paint the colors on different parts of the ROI. So let's go to the ROI. And let's just say generic anatomy colors for right now. Okay. So each one of these, it's a map or not lab, 3D slicer is going to be referring to it as a structure. So I'm going to add a structure. Um, let's just say some. Uh, let's not do foreign. Uh, okay. Foreign object. And then you'll go, we can change these uh, these colors later, so don't be too upset if you didn't get the color you wanted. So what I'm going to do is uh, threshold it. So everything is labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm actually just going to do a threshold from 1 to 1, or everything just labeled 1. You can see whatever was labeled 1 is now yellow if I apply it. So I'm actually going to color it yellow. Um, you can obviously have other maps that have some intensity values, but the, the easiest way I'm going to show you right now is thresholding. We can do another one where it's a little different but make sure that you don't do something that overwrote what you did before so I did 2 to 2 here but if I said you know 0.5 to 2 here everything that was colored yellow would now be colored blue or whatever color I just chose left frontal lobe colored um, so I'm just gonna do this for the rest of the ROIs and essentially we're just painting on the ROIs some colors and these are colors we really want to just visualize in a 3D space and then we're gonna overlay a um, a brain, a gray brain, and do some alpha blending to actually make it look pretty good. And then I can talk about some things. I don't want that. No, we don't want that color. So you can double click it and change it in here. So let's get something just, where was that green? Okay. Okay, so add that. And I want to threshold everything is five. Okay, everything five is going to turn green. Great. It's okay. So now these are all separate things, but we actually want to merge them all into one big picture. So I'm going to say merge all. And I don't think one of them was labeled. So whatever I labeled as a three actually didn't work. So let's see. That was not that. Um, so it's good troubleshooting. So yellow. This isn't anything. So actually, we want to make that a 3. So 3 3. OK, now that'll label everything correctly. So now, if you merge them all, everything should have a color. OK, great. It's a nice little rainbow. Um, so if I want to visualize this in three dimensions, I want to say merge and build. And this is building what it's going to call, again, a model. And so you'll see it up here in the 3D view, um, what I'm talking about. All right, so this is 
a 3D picture of the motor cortex. So if I want to see a big one, okay, so use a 3D layout. You can play with some of these things here. I want to center it, zoom in, zoom out, like this kind of stuff. I want it to spin around. I want to look at it from a certain um, point of view, stuff like that. But for right now, we're going we're gonna to keep this and uh, you know, table this for a second and then try to do the image, or sorry, the, the brain, the actual brain image. So uh, I'm going to go to another module called Grayscale Model Maker, and I'm going to use this pretty frequently um, because it's really good when it actually just takes in some just template brains or anything like that. So I'm going to create a new model. And so this will make a gray model that we're going to overlay on this and then do some alpha blending to make it look pretty good. Okay. All right. So, grayscale model. Okay, so you can see the ROI trying to get out of here, but it can't because this grayscale model is overwhelming it. So I'm going to go to the Models tab. And now we got all our models here. So you can just click on the grayscale model maker. And if you just want this to disappear, you just go Visibility, Gone. Okay, or you could, uh, you know, selectively delete some of your ROIs. Again, like I was saying, color, you can change. Um, this I don't necessarily want to be maybe that color yellow, maybe I want it to be brighter, maybe I want it to be a bluish hue, something like that. So I can change that and it'll actually change it in here. As you see, it's a little brighter. Let's take off the model, the gray. Oh, no, no. That you want to keep gray. Or you can make it a different color, I don't know. Um, but that's a little lighter yellow. So Okay, let's actually show you how to alpha blend these. So opacity, so you can kind of blend in and out. Um, and all these material properties will allow you to change different things about your brain to make it look a little different. So it can, you know, you can tweak these as much as you want to try to see some structures or not see some structures or, you know, whatever really suits your type of cup of tea. And all the rest of the options I haven't really delved into, but for the most part, these are the things that should probably allow you to get a good looking image. So again, you can make the and spin around if you want to record this or something like this. And so I'm actually using um, Screenium for Mac. There's QuickTime Pro for the Lion people out there. Um, there's a whole bunch of other screen recording um, options for this. And you can tweak this a little bit. So you can take a white background. I want to take all these labels off. And I want to take the cube off. I want to look at it from here or something. Or you can actually record yourself you know, spinning these around. Um, so that's pretty much it for a 3D visualization. So again, really quick, the steps are bring the data in, build the structures for the actual labels, so the ROI, I'll call it, um, but it might be something different. Uh, then make a grayscale model of your brain, and then overlay the two and do some alpha blending to actually make it look a little different. So, But you could do the same thing for these um, these, uh, the ROI, you can blend that in a little bit so it's a little bit lighter than the rest, so you might be able to see through it. Um, but all these things you can kind of do on the back end, kind of tweaking it, but for the most part, this is a good, quick way to get some good 3D visualizations of your data. Thanks.